Hebrews 4.16 tell, tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace. These things are gone. A lot of people just got Miracles are something that take place at God's appointed time. God bless you. Welcome to Bible Truth Talk. I'm your host, Brother J. Eric Smith. And today we're going to be talking about what's the purpose of coming to church? What is the purpose of coming to church? Okay, we want to start with where did the word church come from and what does the word church mean? According to the King James Bible, we know that the New Testament was written in Greek and we know that the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Now, in the New Testament Greek, the word church is defined as an ecclesia. What is an ecclesia? An ecclesia is simply a few or a group of Christians associating together in honor of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the word church or the word ecclesia can also be defined as an assembly. What is an assembly? The word assembly in the Old Testament Hebrew language is defined as a company, a congregation, or a multitude of people. In the New Testament Greek, the word assembly is best defined as a mass meeting, a Jewish synagogue, a Christian community of members on earth, or saints in heaven. Now, to put it in layman terms, my pastor always put it in a nutshell by simply saying that the church is not an organization or a building, but is a supernatural body of believers filled with the presence and the power of God as we conform to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to repeat that. The church is not an organization or a building, but is a supernatural body of believers filled with the presence and the power of God as we conform to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now let's move on for time's sake. Now we want to talk about the three aspects of the word church according to the scripture. Uh, the three aspects of the word church. Number one can be an assembly or a congregation. We just mentioned that. Uh, you can find that in Acts chapter 19 verse 32 and 39. Number two. The second aspect of the word church, according to scripture, is a body of believers, followers of Jesus Christ, who are claimed to be the body of Christ as, as well as his bride. All right. You can find that in Colossians 1, 24, 1 Timothy 3, 15, Ephesians 5, 23, 25, and 27, Matthew 16, 18, 1 Corinthians 6, 4, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Romans 12, 4 and 5, 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Okay, the third aspect of the word church according to scripture is the universal unseen church or assembly in which is in heaven. And you can find that in Hebrews 12, verses 23. Now let's move on for time's sakes. I want to talk about several places in which you can have church or where you can have an ecclesia or assembly or whatever you want to call it. You can have church inside a public building, under a tent, a basement, or wherever two or more are gathered in his name. With that being said, I want to touch on a very popular scripture that some tend to have a debate about. I want to break down Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 for you real fast. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Hebrews 10, 25, or Hebrews 10, 24, 25 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of your ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching now here's where the common debate or the argument occurs sometimes when a person is absent from the public church building or they don't attend church for whatever reason Christians or people of the church will confront them with the Hebrew 1025 scripture encouraging them that they need to get into a public church now for the person that's choosing to stay away from the public church their argument would be that it is all right to have church at home or wherever and they don't have to go to church to experience god and guess what they are absolutely right they are not obligated to go have church in a public building however it is beneficial and extremely important 
to join or be a part of a public church building. I'm going to share with you in a minute of why I say it is in very beneficial and imperative. Okay. Now, before I get to that, I want to let you know that uh, there are many individual people, such as ministers, television evangelists, pastors, YouTube ministers, with their own ministries. And there are some people who just stay at home and watch church on TV. Now, now stay with me as I make these two points. Um, now, if you are an individual or a person that God specifically or divinely told to start a church inside your house, tent, backyard, or anywhere other than a public church building, then you want to make sure that it is God that told you to do so. Because you will certainly need his support. Secondly, if you are an individual that's sitting at home alone watching church on TV, doing your own YouTube videos, serving in your own ministry with the absence of attending a public church building, then Hebrews 10, 24, 25 applies to you. Now, before you press the stop button or change the channel on me, allow me to explain why I said that. Now, I'm not telling you that you should stop watching church on TV. I'm not telling you to stop making YouTube videos or serving in your outside ministry. But what I am saying is, if you are forsaking the assembling of yourselves amongst other believers, then no one is benefiting but you. So with no further ado, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why it is important to come to church that's being held in a public building. Number one. Coming to a public church building or an ecclesia being held in a building is beneficial and important because God has ordained the preacher or pastor to deliver his word. You can find that in Romans 10, 14, 15. Number two, God speaks directly through the pastor. If you want to hear what God has to say to you, 95% of the time he will speak through that ordained pastor. I say 95% because there are some false churches and some false pastors that have started churches to lead people astray. But it's not our job to judge the pastor. But if you are a true child of God, you will know if his message is one of deception or truth. We must pray that God leads us to a public church that will give you sound teaching and that will help you grow. Okay, number three. Third reason why it is beneficial and important to come to a public church being held in the building is your presence your hugs and your smile alone could make someone's day sometimes it may help the person feel better about themselves you may be an inspiration to someone that's looking up to you you also may be someone that a struggling christian or a struggling person may need to see jesus christ in with that being said i want to share with you a testimony that i experienced a couple of years back uh, i was at this workplace one morning, and uh, I think it was in 2003, uh, I just walked into the workplace, and I was reading a book. And as I sat down, this young man was pacing the floor right in front of me. And then he walked over by me and sat next to me. And he told me that, man, I was going to kill myself this morning. But when I sat by you, I changed my mind. He said, when I sat by you, man, I just felt chills go all over my body. And then from that point on, man, I just went and started telling them about the goodness of God. But the point I'm trying to make is I didn't say anything to the man. I just sat there and I didn't feel anything. I didn't know anything was moving in me. I didn't know he seen anything in me. But he saw Christ inside of me. And that's what changed his mind about committing suicide. So your presence alone, that's what I'm talking about. Your presence alone can change somebody's actions man about what they're going to do or what they're doing to themselves that's why it is very important to come to a public church building now let's move on for time's sake number four we come to a public church building or it's beneficial and important to come to a public church building because you need to get information to live your life by and apply it according to God's standards number five your testimony alone can be a blessing to someone else. I want to share with you another testimony. And this also happened in 2003, back in the church I was going to at the time. Uh, this young lady sitting in front of me in the church, she stood up and gave a testimony. 
And the testimony was so moving and so convincing till it caused me to shed a tear and repent right there in my seat. You know, I was going through some little personal issues at the time. And and her testimony was just so strong. You know, I started crying and I, I, and I repented right there where I was sitting. And I asked God to forgive me about what, what was going on in my life at that time. So me coming to church or me being in church, hearing that testimony, it really benefited me and helped me out a lot. So remember, testimonies, your testimony alone can be a blessing to someone else. Okay. Number six. We go to serve as a body of believers to build, grow, edify, and learn from each other for the sole purpose of helping the lost. Number seven, the church is held in a public building sometimes because it may be too many people to fit inside of one house, basement, or a tent. The public church building allows enough space for a vast majority to be able to get saved, blessed, or experience God. Now, let's say you had a church in your house or basement or whatever and 4,000 people in your community heard about your little church that's going on in your house or your basement or whatever if those 4,000 people were interested in coming to your house you know it would be an impossible you know it would be impossible for them to fit inside your house so that's why I believe that God allows man to build churches because he do want a vast majority of people saved, blessed and deliver so with that being said let's move on to number eight for time's sake all right coming to a public church building allows you to share your tithes and offerings of what god has blessed you with for the sole purpose of taking care of the building expenses like lights water bill gas etc now your money also goes towards the welfare of people that's truly in need Okay, number nine. It gives you the opportunity to meet and build relationships with other people. It gives you the opportunity to meet and build relationships with other people. And last but not least, number 10. It gives you the space and freedom to worship, praise, and thank God. Okay. Now, in my closing... There are many reasons why it is beneficial and important to be a part of a church in a building. I just named the fruit for time's sakes. Now, I would like to speak to some of you that's watching this video. Now, you may know of someone who hasn't been in church for quite some time. Some of the reasons may be you were hurt by, by the pastor. You were treated wrong by fellow members. You wasn't greeted right. No one from the church came to see about you in your time of need. Or whatever the case may be. I want to share with you this little nugget. Uh, now, pay attention. If you were the only person living on earth and there were only three apple trees to eat from, those apple trees were your only source of survival and nourishment. Now, let's say you pick one rotten apple off the first tree. Would you allow that one rotten apple keep you from trying out the other two trees folks what I'm trying to say is that there are no perfect churches neither are there any perfect people you will never find a perfect public church sometimes God leads us to the least likely churches and the people because they are the ones that need the most help your knowledge and your righteousness and your light may be the only good thing that they will ever see we as believers are here to be a light to a dark world. You know, Christ, Christ has to show itself through somebody. And remember, it's not about you. God is, is the, God is in the business of saving the hurt and the loss. But if you are absent from the church assembly, no one is benefiting but you. And for those of you that stand home because you are ashamed of what you did or what you were doing, and you think that you're not worthy to come to church until you get it right, I got one question for you. If you had a toothache, would you sit in the house waiting for it to stop? Or would you run to the pharmacy or the dentist to try to take care of your pain? That's my time, folks. And in my closing, <clears throat> I would like to take the time to pray for you that took the time to watch this video. In Jesus' name, if you'll touch and agree with me, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you for this opportunity to talk to the person that's watching this video or the people that's watching this video. Father, thank you for giving me such a message, Father, to let people know the importance of coming to church and what the definition of church and what it means to come to church is. And Father, right now, I just pray that you anoint the person and touch their heart and their mind to receive this message, Father. And Father, for those uh, that stand out of church, Father, those by the sound of my voice that's watching this video that, that is not going to church, or for whatever reason they have stopped coming to church, Father, I ask you to touch their heart and their spirit. Father, fix the situation that they got into, Father. If it's an issue of unforgiveness, Father, I ask you to fill them with your forgiveness that they may be able to forgive that person. Go back to the church that they left or, Father, lead them to a church, public church building, Father, that's suitable for them. And, Father... I just thank you once again for this powerful message, Father, and I pray that it be received all around the world in the authority of Jesus' name. I pray, amen and amen. <clears throat> That's my time. Remember to fast and pray and read at least two chapters a day, and God will bless you in many, many ways. Remember, it's not about who wins or loses. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's all about being understood. That's my time. Bible Truth Talk. God bless you. Hello, ladies. Are you tired of having bad experiences with men? Are you tired of thinking that you have found Mr. Right but only come to find out that you dated Mr. Wrong? Are you tired of fighting the games and the lies that men come at you with? Or perhaps you are already married and just want to make things better in your marriage. Well, stay tuned because I have a stunning message to present to all women about men. but uh, addictions can range a whole gamut of things. Mm -hmm. like, uh, you can be have an addictive personality, you can be addicted to other people, you can be addicted to uh, negative things, you can be addicted to violence, you can be addicted to so many things. Folks, but positive thinking, and if you give someone a thousand positive options, the negative options will wash away. Well, the Bible tells us that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Hebrews 4.16 tell, tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might receive help and grace and mercy in the mm -hmm. time of need. So you know, I prayed to God and asked him, what are the seven major addictions? What are the ones that's overwhelming everyone? What triggers a personal addiction? What, what makes a person want to yield to the addiction? Yeah. And God is, God is always giving. Uh, the greatness comes not when things always go good for you, but the greatness comes when you take some knocks, some disappointments, when sadness comes. Because only when you've been in the high, deepest valley will you ever know what it's to be on the highest mountain. How do we overcome addiction? 